So I'm going to talk about take two smiles and call me in the morning. Since second grade, I, I dreamed of becoming a doctor. I knew that one day that I'd be helping a lot of people, and that's what I wanted to do. Little did I know that I would be the one that would need the help one day. After graduating medical school and becoming a doctor, I went to a general surgery residency. And in my residency, I went out for, for a run one evening, and a car it was going west, and it was around sunset time. It didn't see me, and I was in the crosswalk. The car was coming off the freeway, and it hit me on my right side, doing 50 miles per hour. I was thrown for 100 feet. I had a lot of broken things. You know, you've heard the adage, you know, you, you, know, you think I look bad, you see the other guy. Well, the other guy was a car. I mean, it looked like a deer had hit the front end, and the windshield was cracked where my head had hit and my shoulder. I was, I was pretty bad off. I don't remember much except being in the intensive care unit. And by the time I got to the intensive care unit, I was pretty, pretty bad. I remember waking up and, and something was pulling on my legs as my, my pelvis was shattered. And I had all these bandages on my arm as my shoulder was broken. I had a tube coming out of my chest with blood as I had ribs broken. And when I opened my eyes, everybody was looking at me because I had a bleed in my brain and I had a fracture in my skull. I was pretty messed up. I was on the other side. I was now not the doctor, but I was the patient. I went through a lot of operations, a lot of pain, but I survived. What most stands out during this hospitalization you know, this endured for two months. And it wasn't all the operations. It wasn't, you know, the fact that I wanted ice chips so bad. And if anybody who's ever been sick, you know you just want those little ice chips in the hospital. Or something in your mouth. So dry. It wasn't even the fact that the catheter, my urine catheter, got ripped out of my penis while the balloon was still up. Let me tell you, that really hurts. So anybody, it was really bad. But what stood out the most during that hospitalization was one morning when I was on the, on the trauma service and the trauma team was rounding to come and see me. And when I say the trauma service, and what that is, 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 is a big team. They have, they have social workers, they have doctors, they have residents and students, pharmacists, and they're rounding, they're coming around to see me. And one morning, the attending doctor and the chief resident were the only ones that were allowed into my room to see me because there were so many people. And they came in to see me one morning, they asked how I was doing, and I said, I'm doing good. I'm getting better, getting stronger. And they walked out of the room, and the door was still open, and everybody outside was asking, how's he doing, how's he doing? And what that attending doctor said was so significant, because it was really somebody that I looked up to, and was a mentor. What he said, his literal words were, he's fucked. He's never coming back. His career is over. Those, that negative energy he trumpeted at that time was devastating to me. It was like the, the wind beneath my wings was gone. You know, when someone doesn't believe in you anymore, you know, it, be it, you know and this was a mentor, a teacher, be it a parent, and this was my doctor. He didn't believe in me anymore. You know, it's hard to come back. I was blessed that my father immediately retired when my accident happened. And my parents came to be with me. My father then spent the next month at my bedside every day. You know, and, and, and he endured her. He was forced to, because in rehab, there was only one channel that worked. And we had to sit there, and we watched Jerry Springer in the morning, <laughs> and we watched it in the afternoon, and we watched the evening. And let me tell you, if you're ever sick, or you feel bad about yourself, just watch Jerry Springer. It's going to make you better. <laughs> but but during, during rehab, I learned to walk again. I learned to use my arm again. And every step of the way, my father was there sharing his positive energy with me. 
And he did it with just a smile. I've taken that negative energy from my doctor and the positive energy from my father. And I've adapted that into the way I practice medicine, into the way I practice life, and the way I practice living. I want to take the next 10 minutes and talk to you all about how, as a healthcare provider, as a parent, as a spouse, as a business leader, as brothers and sisters, how we all have to share our energy with the people that we treat around us. And it can be as easy as a smile. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, come on, you know, really energy, heal, smile? You know, is that, is that really it? And the scientists out in the audience are saying right now, seriously, healing with energy? Hippocrates, Greek physician, and truly the, the father of Western medicine, he wrote that natural forces within us are the true healers of disease. He believed that mind and body were a unity, and to affect one was to affect the other. Over 2,000 years ago, it was already considered how energy within us and shared with someone else could heal. But I know some of you are still, come on, energy. Where do we have energy? We don't have an electrical cord coming off us. Where do we have power, electricity? Researchers at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, Georgia, are currently working on a polymer that's implanted into our bodies that's able to store the energy that we produce. And that energy is going to be able to be used for pacemakers, insulin pumps, other medical devices, and eventually our smartphones. So we, we do have a lot of energy. And modern medicine is finally catching up and realizing that we are full of something. Not necessarily what they thought we were full of, but we are full of, we're full of energy. And that energy can augment healing. Now, I see a lot of patients. And by the time I see them, they're very sick. They've been through one two, sometimes three healthcare providers before they come to me. And when they come to me, patients are always gracious. And they come and say, hello, Dr. De La Rosa. It's so wonderful to meet you. It's so nice. And then I meet with them and I say, it's bad to know me. It's terrible. I'm the last stop before getting your chest ripped open. And then I smile at them. And I tell them, it's going to be okay. We're going to fix you. We're going to make you right. It's going to be okay. The mindset of a lot of these patients is way off. Nobody wants to feel sick or feel hopeless. By sharing a smile and sharing my energy with them, I'm able to shift their mindset and therefore shift their energy. Why does this matter? I believe it doesn't matter how many operations or how many valves or bypasses or what the treatment protocol is. Without a shift in a patient's mindset, therefore a shift in their energy, healing will fail, and it always will fail. Quantum physics has shown us that everything is energy, and everything affects everything else. Many people think that energy is something we can't feel, we can't see, we can't touch. I believe we do feel energy, even though it's invisible. I want to do an experiment with you all. I want you all to remember a time that you walked into a room that was full of people. Did you feel the energy in the room? Was it a birthday party? A funeral? Did you get called into the CEO's office for a meeting? Did you feel the energy? I was asked recently to see a patient who had an infection on her heart valve. It was one o'clock in the afternoon and I, and I went in to see the patient. As I walked in, the room was dark, the blinds were closed to the right was the patient's daughter, to the left was the patient's husband, and the patient was in the bed. I immediately felt anxiety, apprehension, negativity, fear. That was their energy when I walked in the room. I introduced myself, turned the lights on, opened the blinds. I explained to them where they've been, where we are today with their health care, and where we're going to be. Everyone was crying. The daughter's crying. Patient sobbing, and the husband's trying to hold back his tears. I asked what was wrong. I didn't know if it, that I smell like B.O., the lights were on now, they were able to see me, they got scared. I didn't know. 
And then the daughter said, Doctor, we've been here for one week, and you're the first person to give us hope. I didn't give them hope. What I had done was shared my energy with them, and I did it with a smile, the way my father did with me. Thoughts are energy. Emotions are energy. And we, again, as healthcare providers, as parents, as spouses, as brothers and sisters, we all have to share the energy with the people that we treat around us. And we do it with a smile, the way my father did with me. Now, I've talked a lot about smiles. And I've talked about how it, it, how it could help heal somebody. <laughs> but what about ourselves? Can a smile heal us? So researchers at the University of Kansas set out to find out, if you're a smiler, if you smile, is there, is there a health benefit with that? So they took 169 graduate students, and they put them into three categories. The categories were, number one, during these stressful tasks, very stressful tasks, you had to absolutely smile every time. <laughs> Big smile. The second category, during these stressful tasks, no smile. Very serious, no smile. And in the third category, you had to smile. You were forced to smile using chopsticks. What the study concluded was any type of smile, be it forced or natural, was less stressful on the person doing the smiling. You had less stress and a slower heart rate. And we know from, from hundreds of papers that have been published that less stress equals a better heart health. In conclusion, I challenge you all. The next time you're having that conversation with a patient, the next time you're having it with your child, with your spouse, brothers and sisters, or your business team, have a smile on your face when you're having that conversation with them. And if you can't get a smile going, get some chopsticks. <laughs> Put them in your mouth. And smile the way my father did with me. Because you're not only helping that other person, but you're helping yourself as well. Thank you.